thinking and writing in like 700 BC. And I feel that he was the inventor of the idea of flow. So the first two words are panda ring, everything flows. And then the second thing that he said is, opus in a pano, in a kikato. As it is above, so it is below. Opus in a mesa, in a kiexo. As it is within, so it is without. All around, kepali reon. Everything flows and it flows again. So what that says to me is that there is no way of stopping, counting, judging, defining, limiting, censoring, and, and all the other you know, structures that patriarchy kind of like trades in. <laughs> it's all artificial, it's not real. In reality, there is like no limitation, there is no beginning and end, there is no like, okay, we're building for something. No, it just all happens at the same time, simultaneously. We flow in and out, but we want to be in the light because as we are within, so we are without. That's the whole like, concept of what we now call manifesting, you know, the concept of as you see the world, it sees you, the reflections, maya, um, you know, the idea that as it is above, so it is below. I mean, can you imagine that? Like, as heaven is, so the earth is. As earth is, so the underworld is. Um, but for me, most beautiful of all is this original panda ring, all around Kepali realm, you know, the way that everything flows, because it frees me from the idea of, you know, time as a currency, time that is money, time that is finite, time that runs, 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 and makes us anxious, and we have to catch up. So instead, I just look here, and I say, no, you know, everything has happened, is happening, and will be happening simultaneously in parallel ways and parallel universes. And the more open I can be within this epic time, instead of like linear, constricted, productive, you know, time, which is what like the matrix wants me to believe in, but it's not real, the more happy I will be, the more wise I will be, the more inclusive I will be. So that's my Heraclitus tattoo, and I just, you know, I love it. I love where it is and how it supports me. Um, and then on the other two sides of the same leg, I have a Christian hymn to a special saint who is the saint of thinkers and thinking um, and studying and kind of like going deep. And the hymn, uh, written in the Middle Ages, says in Constantinople, in a monastery, says, um, I am honoring your studying and your work, your work in, in the mind, in the spirit, um, and, you know, the way that you have made consciousness and studying your home, holy one. So this is this one, uh, and there's a little tiny cave church dedicated to this saying on the island of Crete, on, on the cove where, where uh, like we summer, that we summer. And then right after it, I don't know if you can see it, I have um, this, which is actually musical notes, but they're Byzantine, early Middle Ages musical notes, and they are the notes that go with the hymn that I just described, right? So it's just like beautiful because of, you know, I love the way that, that, that this is a language and it's a dead language. The ancient Greek, in a sense, is also a dead language, even though you know, like we all cannot read it, we don't quite speak it. This down here, Les Vothin e the Cadi, was written by Plato, was said and written by Plato. Right below it, I actually had a quote by Sappho, the poetess from my island of Lesbos, where I was born. And then I covered it up with waves, because I'm Pisces, I'm a triple Pisces, you know, so I put the Japanese waves over it. But this is interesting, right? So I had, I had a song, that's a, a fragment, of a song, uh, which is all that has survived, that she had written about love. 
And in the song, the words that I had written were love and ardor, which I felt meant, you know, uh, positive ardor. And then I, I got the two, and strange things started happening in my life. And I looked into the etymology deeper and deeper and deeper, and the more I researched, the more I realized that it could have meant pain or suffering. So I covered it up with water, and all those funny things stopped. <laughs> So I really take this tattoo seriously. I do believe that putting the words on my skin charges an energy and kind of, you know, it, it lights up uh, my, my own path in a different way. So Lesbos in Idakadi means the 10th news comes from Lesbos. And Plato said that about Sappho, which is pretty extraordinary because this was like the birth of patriarchy. Women weren't educated, women couldn't uh, act, women couldn't vote, women, you know, uh, had no real rights. Um, but he said that the nine muses are divine, the tenth muse was a woman. So it was like the greatest compliment ever paid to a woman. And um, it was paid to, you know, my compatriot, Sappho, who was, of course, you know, so gifted with words that she was quickly banned by patriarch and all her work was burned and would have very little left to survive. But that means so much to me because I am Lesbothian. I come from Lesbos. I was born in Lesbos. I work with words. So, hey, how inspiring is that? Um, all right, so here, I don't know if you can see it, um, these are some of my important symbols. This spiral is Celtic, um, and it's the tripartite goddess. It's ever moving, ever turning, the wheel of life. And it's the goddess of the underworld, the goddess of earth, and the goddess of heaven, constantly staring together in harmony. Um, the tr whole, tr holy trinity. And this is a symbol I work with a lot. It's um, the alchemical symbol of the philosopher's stone. So it's the circle squared, the square triangled, and the triangle circled. And it's basically the alchemist's quest to transmogrify, to turn one thing into its opposite or one thing into another, you know, to take a metal and turn it into gold, to take these words and turn them into gold, um, to, you know, not like respect the uh, superficial boundaries of, of, the, of the material world, the way that we think we should, but instead to go inside it. Um, this quote is from a letter that my father wrote to me. It starts from here in Greek. He wrote me this letter when I, I lived in India and I got really sick and I almost died. Um, really, really sick. So he wrote, I thought it was so lovely that I kept it. It was such a blessing. May she cover you with her healing veil and put her hand on you for a miracle. And I, uh, and I did get a miracle and I got better. So I think that's that with this leg, except I have a birthmark. And so <laughs> my, I don't know if you get my birthmark, but around it, I think that the birthmark looks like a Greek island, and I wrote it, I wrote a quote from the Revelations, from the Apocalypse, St. John the Divine, and it says, um, and the angel told me to write. So, you know, St. John, before he was a, Jane, a, a saint, <laughs> uh, was exiled on the island of Patmos, the Greek island of Patmos, uh, and went up on the rock where I visited and wrote revelations as it was revealed to him by God, you know, with John as the vessel. So that's where the quote comes from. And the angel told me to write. Um, this is a similar one. I actually had it done as a kind of like my Holocaust number. I, I, th I felt it was, it's from Ovid. Uh, and it says, not a day without writing, to remind me to kind of write every day, which I do, it works. <laughs> um, this, uh, oh, these are Artemis and Apollo, who are twin gods, and they are the invocations to the twins in, in the Homeric hymns. The Homeric hymns predate like the Odyssey and the 
and the Iliad. And it's this say, uh, you know, come to me, Apollo, come to me, Artemis, you know, when I say hymns to you, or I sing the praises. Um, this one uh, is this is also a Homeric hymn to Aphrodite. So from the same era, like uh, 700, 800 BC, and it just simply says, come to me, Aphrodite, now. <laughs> Uh, so come to me, goddess of love, now and always. Um, and um, this longer one is actually three prayers from three different periods in Greek language combined, and they show how the language, that shows how the language hasn't changed. So it's an invocation to Athena, Pallas, the wisdom goddess with the owl um, from the Parthenon. So come to me, Athena, virgin born, because she was born out of the head of Zeus, um, daughter and virgin mother, that is actually what they call Virgin Mary. So from Athena, I go to the invocation to the Virgin Mary, virgin mother, and then my terrible protection is the prayer to a very specific Virgin Mary, um, whose icon was worshiped on Mount Athos, this medieval monastery, where only men are allowed, and it's the virgin, the virgin of, who is the terrible protector, protectress. A little bit like Kali, but Christian. Um, this is my first tattoo that I ever got on my bicep, and it was to cover a scar from a motorcycle accident, um, where I was hit by someone who was like trying to cut call me and came too close. And uh, yeah, I had a lot, have a bunch of stitches, and, so I reclaimed that story, and I got uh, that was my tattoo when I was 18. I got the first one when I, on my 18th birthday in San Francisco, and it starts with um, Homer's uh, invocation in the Odyssey to the muse to come to him and give him ideas for writing, and um, it says the Odyssey begins with. Come to me, muse. No, speak to me, muse of a man. And mine says, speak to me, muse of a woman. But the way that the Greek is written, the first word in the original is man, and the first word in mine is woman, gyni, like gyno. <laughs> uh, and so, of a woman, speak to me, muse. And it's written in a spiral. And which is like my favorite design of life. Um, this, uh, these quotes here actually continue on both hands, and they are um, written by Alistair Crowley, who's one of my guides, in his handwriting, so I find that very special. And it starts here, then this time drawn is a key, colon, then the circle squares is a key also. And abracadabra. <laughs> abracadabra. So that's basically the secret of all magic. You know, when you like the time draw, you find the key of time. So you free yourself from the, you know, mortal coil, whatever you want to call it, you know, the way that we are bound to time in such like a silly way that we all agree to count it by, and then square the circle, and that's when the magic happens, and, you know, things manifest, and, and the things that we don't have words for, that are too ancient for our language, that are not about, you know, trading, and sh sheltering, and like survival mode, those other things that come from Mother Nature, that's when they happen. And they show us how much bigger the feminine can be than like, you know, the patriarchal version of masculine, and how the feminine can contain everything within. Um, okay, so then this is Hebrew, the, uh, an ear, the letter that in Hebrew means I am, and it's the name of God. So I love this so much because it's one of the, the first the first name of God out of so many in the Hebrew religion. When Moses um, 
gets the Ten Commandments from God, he asks, uh, who shall I say sent me? Who shall I say gave me the commandment? And God tells Moses, I am sent you. And I just feel that so awesome because it's just telling us God is within each one of us in that I am. All divinity is contained. You know, if we can stop and feel it, feel our I amness, and how everything is one and it's all I am. So it's my friend. Um, this is a prayer to um, my angel Michael. He's a an angel who exists, to, who is actually a historical figure on Lesbos, and he's only worshipped on Lesbos. Um, and it says, I have you as my guard, protector, and mystic, um, or, you know, and keeper of my soul, beloved uh, Mikhail. Um, that angel appeared on clay, on wet clay, and has done so many miracles there. And, and it's still that face on the clay, is like awesome. And this is my Kundalini name that I got when I, by Yogi Bhajan. So the name that was given to me is Nirbe, and it means fearless, <laughs> which I thought was right on, and they're always right on. And you, you know, you, Yogi give a name, always tells you something fundamental about your true nature. So Nirbe, fearless. And this is a quote from the Bhagavad Gita that I got when I lived in, um, I think I got it in Goa, um, when I lived in India. And it's, it has the four principles of the Bhagavad Gita, which you can put together, give us like the harmony of opposites, which is what, uh, you know, the, all, all of these words are, are, are speaking to, you know, living in a, in a place of becoming, you know, living in a way that you're always in mid leap. In, in, in process, you know, kind of like going rather than, you know, in, in something familiar, predictable, stuck, constricted. No, you know, kind of like feel yourself always, not quite levitating, but from one thing to another, in between. That's what I love. Um, I don't know if I'm forgetting something, but if I do, we'll do another segment. But I feel like we've covered most of them, and um, oh no, I have a, I have my left leg. Okay, so here this is Hermes, because Hermes uh, the wing is the Hermetic wing, because Hermes is one of my guides, and I do um, try to live by the seven Hermetic principles, which I can talk about another time. So there is Hermes, and then this is. Um, uh, wow, these are so many. <laughs> this is a letter that my dad wrote to me when I left home when I was 15. I left from the island of Crete and I went to LA to like, find my life, my fortune. And he says, hold tight the, the uh, wheel, the steering wheel of life. You can do it with my blessing. Um, and this is a poem that my daughter wrote to me on Mother's Day when she was in like, I don't know, third grade? And it says, mothers are glorious things, dainty and gentle as a butterfly's wings. I love you, mommy. Um, so, so cute. Um, okay, here at the bottom down here, I have um, NASA stay. Um, yeah. Nasus I don't remember the whole quote, but it's written by Sappho, and it says, um, we will be remembered through the centuries. We will be remembered through all time, which I, again, love so much, because she prophesied the fact that she will remember, be remembered for millennia, and millennia against all odds, and in fact, all women who love women will be called lesbians because of her and because of her poetry. And just how much magic is contained in that, in that, like historical fact alone. So yes, uh, that was like her prophesying, it had to be here. And then I have another tripartite goddess, um, right here, the goddess of the moon, 
comes from Minoan Crete. And then I have the sign of Neptune and Venus, uh, who are my rulers as a, Pis a Piscean. And then um, I have another quote that is also from, I think this is Socrates, actually. Um, and I will talk about Socrates in a second. Because Socrates is really my, um, my reason for having a podcast. <laughs> You know, Socrates was against like writing everything down. He was like, the power of the exchange is live, is in the oral, is in the moment, is in the real. It's something that cannot be preserved. It's something that you know cannot be like um, frozen with ice. <laughs> um, so he it was only because Plato like wrote from memory all of his speeches or what he remembered and as he remembered that we know about Socrates. And also because he, you know, chose to take the hemlock, which is another long story. Um, but anyway, so he's one of my guides. And this finally is um, a poem by William Blake, whom I love so much because, like me, he um, was a writer and an artist. He combined painting with, um, you know, creative writing and poetry, and he called it all prophetic works and he felt that you know writing kind of came to him in downloads and he printed his own books and oh wow it's just such like it's just amazing that he did all this um, and huge work I mean the work so long so William Blake but this is one of his simplest simplest poems and it says tiger tiger burning bright in the forests of the night What infernal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? <laughs> so, basically, the next question is, did he who make the lamb make thee? So, the creation um, is so awesome and powerful that it seems to be even more powerful than the creator and the tiger and you and I are all you know the same I am you know kind of like spreading wildfire in the night um, and for me it feels that you know that's what true love is it's being able to unite with our Tigers within and with our news within and asking the questions that don't have answers or have numerous answers and living in that truth of the ineffable, you know, of the eternal. Um, that doesn't begin and doesn't end. I love you. Incessantly, I would be God.